Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anacha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, we read... Well, I know that I know that Glory Hole was in it, and I know A Printer's Purpose was in it. I don't really remember Refractive Explorers or Cathar Journal, which I think is probably because I was barely conscious when I did it. But in this episode, we're going to be checking out Easter Frog, the Lexicon, Intelligence Switcher, 51st State of Mind, and the Aquarium, which sounds weird. So, what's the Easter Frog? It's Euclid. Special containment procedures. All 111 specimens of SCP-1325 currently in the Foundation's possession are housed in a large paludarium at Bioresearch Area 7. The temperature and humidity of the palud paludarium are to be kept at constant range kept constant at ranges of 25 to 30 degrees celsius and 50 to 60 percent respectively and the specimens are to be fed two to three times a week on crickets locusts earthworms and baby mice do frogs eat baby mice or are they not actually frogs any eggs laid by the specimens during easter are to be given to research staff whereupon they will either be used for research fed to class d personnel in order to propagate or destroyed i don't like the sound of that SP-1325 is a species of frog which resembles the Australian green tree frog, uh, Latoria carulia. Genetic analysis confirms that it is closely related to L. carulia. Foundation zoologists have named it the Easter frog. All specimens are anatomically and genetically male. As such, it does not sexually reproduce. Dis despite the eggs. Uh, on Palm Sunday, as defined by the start of the week before the full, first full moon after March 21st, an egg will start to grow from the back of every adult specimen of 1325. The egg will develop over the course of the Holy Week until early morning of Easter Sunday where it will detach from the back. The egg will always begin to develop on Palm Sunday and will be laid on Easter Sunday regardless of which dates these holidays fall on any given year. Most cases of 1325 have been found in countries, Australia, New Zealand, and the USA, where the vast majority of the population celebrates Easter and does so on the date of the first full moon after March 21st. Is that really how it's decided? That's why it's... Okay. Uh, the, the only exceptions are two cases in Port Mores... Mores... Moresby, Papua New Guinea. While Easter is not celebrated in any form in most of Papua New Guinea, Port Moresby, I don't know how to pronounce that, has adopted Western culture to a considerably greater extent than the rest of the country, and thus this does not rule out the possibility that the reproductive cycle is determined by the local culture. The hard protective shell of the egg consists of a thick layer of a substance which is identical to chocolate in taste, appearance, and texture, presumably in order to promote human consumption. Inside the egg is a cluster of more than a dozen small jelly-like eggs similar to those of a normal amphibian, which are nourished and sustained by the yolk sac and ab albumin? Given that they are clones of the parent, all eggs are genetically identical. Traces of the benzo- oh my god. Benzodiazepin derivative drug prazepam, prazepam, have been detected in the yolk in the yolk consumption- the yolk sac and albumin. It is thought that the prazepam's Anxiolytic and sedative properties facilitate human consumption by rendering subjects oblivious to the egg's contents. You could have just said it numbs the mouth so they don't feel the eggs. You ain't have to say all this. You could have just said it numbs the mouth so they don't feel the eggs. When the egg is fully... Also, it could have just disguised itself as a Cadbury egg and they would have been expecting it to be slimy. Because no one's expecting there to be a yolk inside of a chocolate egg unless it's a Cadbury. When the egg is fully developed and ready to detach, 1325 will seek out sites where it is likely to attract human consumption, typically among similar-looking confectionery, confectionery, before depositing it. The fact that 1325 is able to strategically position its eggs, combined with the fact that it is able to time its reproductive cycle to coincide with Easter, suggests that it is unusually intelligent for an amphibian. However, its behavior outside of its re reproductive cycle is identical to that of a tree frog. So, one week out of the year, it says Smart is Kermit the Frog and the arm he rode in on. The egg will remain viable for two to four days after being detached from 1325. If and when it is ingested by a human subject, the eggs within that survive ingestion will hatch into tadpoles in response to the temperature and pH of the stomach. The tadpoles then attach themselves to the wall of the stomach via small hooks on the tips of their tails to prevent them from passing through the 
Pylorus into the Duodenum, or Duodod... Du I think I said it right the first time. Uh, along with the chime. Over the following 10 to 12 days, the tadpoles will feed on the partly digested food in the chime as they <coughs> grow and metamorphose into mature specimens of 1325. During this period, the human host will likely experience abdominal discomfort, diarrhea, and loss of appetite to varying degrees of severity. When the specimens are fully developed and able to survive outside the stomach, they will secrete emetic toxins from their skin, thereby inducing heavy vomiting in the host, which allows them to exit the stomach. They will also secrete large volumes of mucus in order to lubricate their passage up the esophagus. The host will experience Boerhaab syndrome, an esophageal rupture, in around 25% of cases. Once the specimens have exited the host, they will continue to grow for around six months before reaching adult size. Ah, let's see. Footnote. This figure is probably an underestimate because it is largely based on data derived from disposable dudes. As all disposable dudes are adults and the vast majority are in their 20s and 30s, there is little data on children and the elderly. Uh, groups which can reasonably be expected to be more vulnerable. Which skews the statistics downwards. The likelihood of Boer House Syndrome is greater in cases where the host contains a large number of 1325 specimens due to a high proportion of the eggs having survived ingestion, and cases where the specimens have remained in the stomach for longer than is typical and have thus grown quite large. In cases where both these factors are present, the likelihood of Boer Haver Syndrome is close to 100%. So, if it's a child and a frog is large, then throat go boom. Okay. The Lexicon. The loop, the Lexicon is also Euclid. SCP-1326 is to be contained in a standard Site-19 containment cell with a box of used literature, e.g. newspapers or magazines, kept outside its cell. One magazine from the box is to be left within the containment cell as a precaution and must be replaced pending feedings. Every three weeks, a staff member is to feed the SCP by bringing the book kept inside the containment cell within 30 centimeters of the SCP's front cover and held in place until activity ceases. Then discard the magazine in question and replace it with another paper from the box outside the cell. Should the SCP release, let's see, re release two due to failure to perform aforementioned procedure, 1326 containment cells to be kept on lockdown until all instances return to 1326, at which point lockdown may be lifted and the magazine absorbed during the event must be replaced ASAP. All readings of 1326 contents must be performed by disposable dudes only, and any content deemed safe and or useful to the Foundation is to be transcribed and stored on a Foundation computer under document 1326-82. Description. Oh, there's a list of works. SCP-1326 is an ornate leather-bound hardcover book adorned with various moving parts on its front cover, including a circular numbered dial in its upper left corner, a semicircular dial in the lower left corner, and several jointed mechanical arms crossing over its center, ending in mechanical claws or circular lenses. SB-1326 is secured by a lock on its right side, designed to fit a small key designated 1. 1326 may only be opened by 1. It uh, attempts to open a lock using picks or replicas have failed. The contents appear to be an encyclopedic collection of various works and articles on diverse topics. The nature of these entries varies between known works by known authors, altered versions of known works, or unidentified works covering known or unknown material, some of which may be related to SCPs under or out of Foundation custody. This, the content yielded by 1326 when opened may be changed by inputting index numbers via the dials on the book's front cover. These numbers do not appear to follow any sort of classification system, as no correlation has been found between the index values and the contents they yield. We'll get back to the list. If 1326 is brought within one meter of another book or written document, the arms on its cover will begin moving of their own accord in order to line up the, le the lenses on the ends of these arms with the document in question. Once aligned, the lenses will emit a blue light and scan the document for approximately five seconds and return to their original positions. Testing has confirmed that this behavior is a means for the SCP to acquire new information, which will be presented in readable format under an apparently random index designation. How 1326 is capable of identifying sources of information is unknown, though staff theorize it may possess a certain degree of sentience. It is also possible that the book simply reacts to repeating symbols and or patterns as it has been observed scanning Foundation staff name tags or groups of ceiling tiles, though such scans have been noted to be shorter than the scans performed on complete books or written papers. 
It is advised to provide 1326 with new materials on a monthly basis, as the object will become hostile if not fed regularly. See the incident report for details. Uh... Remains of two killed during an incident. Until he rapidly decayed to skeletal form after being killed by Dr. Blank via blunt trauma. Captured by Andrew, researcher Angie Marth. Which apparently has their own website? Blank, on blankety blank blank, after 30 days without feeding, SCP-1326 opened of its own accord and released a swarm of entities resembling large arachnids, henceforth two. These, be uh, these beings acted as an organized unit and proceeded to gather all objects relevant to data storage within the containment chamber, including loose documents, computers, and file cabinets, and bring them to 1326, where they were data expunged and absorbed into the book. As the chamber was not locked at the time, two proceeded to breach containment and continue this process with the surrounding offices, resulting in the loss of Blank Foundation computers as well as Dr. Blank, who had been data expunged into 1326 after attempting to destroy several instances of two. After several minutes of activity, all instances returned to the containment chamber, at which point the ladder opened automatically, revealing a dark corridor extending past the thickness of the book. Once all two had re-entered the book through this passageway, the ladder closed and locked of its own accord. Ten minutes later, 1326 reopened and expelled all the items that had been stolen by two. All documents had been stripped of writing, and all computer hardware had been reverted to factory condition. The body of the doctor was not recovered following the incident. Addendum. Several security footage of the two events revealed the entities make vocalizations resembling human speech while active. Most of these vocalizations are incoherent, but analysis reveals some instances are vocalizing in known languages. The following is a transcript of some vocalizations made by two, translated into English if not already spoken as such. You have failed to pay tribute. The library does not accept unpaid tolls. Return your books on time. Don't damage library property. Heard while Dr. R was under assault by two. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Heard during a containment a contain event after on-site staff had neglected to feed 1326 on schedule. Of note is the fact that this vocalization was made in a voice nearly identical to that of Dr. R. So, the first one, Don't Damage Library Property, is when he was being attacked, or when uh, they were being attacked by the two and vice versa and it looks like in an event afterwards uh he got turned into one of them it sounds like well that sucks for that that person what's that wanderer's library it didn't say anything about the wanderer's library why does it welcome to the tags page it didn't say anything about the Wanderer's Library. I guess I'll get there since it looks like it's in SCP-001 at some point. Okay, next up is the Intelligence Switcher. I know some people who'd be interested in something like that for various reasons. Unless it's terrifying. We'll see. SCP-1327 is safe and is to be kept in a high security storage locker J-21B at Site-19. Any further testing requires written approval from a supervising researcher. High security doesn't sound safe. SP-1327 is an English language intelligence testing kit which superficially resembles the Weschler Ant Adult Intelligence Scale 3rd Revision. It comprises nine testing booklets of varying sizes containing a variety of tasks meant to assess various components of intelligence, designated 1 through 9. A set of colored wooden blocks intended for use in a spatial reasoning task, designated 10, and a pad containing instructions and scoring sheets, designated 11. The anomalous properties of the object manifest upon completion- Ah, damn, I forgot to check the list of works. Um, um, the anomalous properties of the object manifest upon completion of any of the individual tasks. Within 500 milliseconds of task completion, both the test taker and the person administering the test will lapse into a bilateral complex partial seizure, lasting approximately 8 seconds, during which time EEG waves show temporal lobe activation consistent with blank. Upon emerging from the seizure state, the test taker will have the capabilities of the test administrator in the domain of intelligence that was just tested and vice versa. Neither the test taker nor the administrator claims to have any knowledge of an 8 second gap, and barring any radical change in intelligence, both generally proceed as though nothing unusual had happened. See Experiment Log 1. 
The test materials themselves show overt differences from the standard WISE 3 as follows. 1. Analogy tasks, no divergence. 2. Vocabulary tasks, several words are given non-standard spellings. 3. General knowledge. In place of their usual content, all prime number questions concern fairly obscure chemical and metal metallurgical knowledge, such as the freezing point of mercury and the proportion of copper to zinc and brass. 4. Arithmetic tasks, no divergence. 5. Numerical working memory tasks, no divergence. 6. Symbol search tasks. In addition to the alphanumeric and boolean operand characters used in the standard WISE 3, the symbols used in this task include non-standard symbols resembling alchem alchemical characters used in the 17th century Holy Roman Empire. 7. Digital symbol coding tasks, C6. Uh, Matrix, uh, matrix reasoning tasks. The numbers provided in the matrices are different from those in the WISE 3, but with no obvious pattern. 9. Picture completion task. The provided pictures are line drawings which appear to represent scenes from the chemical, or the, I guess, chemical wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz. Block design. The design which test takers are meant to duplicate is impossible to achieve with the blocks provided within the allotted time, resulting in failure regardless of the test, after test taker's aptitude. 11. Instructions and scoring sheets. No divergence from WISE 3 other than that scoring guidelines for the anom anomalous tasks are included. Hmm. Recovery notes. SCP-1327 was obtained from the Psychology Department of Blank University in 1993. The object became known to the Foundation when a graduate student developed signs of severe mental retardation after using it in a study of alpha thalassemia syndrome patients. I, I don't know. What is that? An inherited blood disorder characterized by the formation of an abnormal form of hemoglobin. It causes tiredness, yellowish skin, dark urine, abdominal swelling, and facial bone deformities. Why would that have given them... I don't... Okay. Researcher Dr. Pran. Test date June 25th. Test Administrator D6144, a former elementary school mathematics teacher. Test Taker, a vagrant with no formal education. Task Used Arithmetic Test. Result. Subjects completed the task without incident and entered the complex seizure state as expected. When subsequently tested on a standard intelligence scale, 59903 displayed a significant increase in mathematical aptitude going from the 6th percentile to the 82nd. 6104 was unable to perform basic arithmetic and became highly agitated before he was sedated by foundation guards. Okay, next test, 59903. Okay, same same person trying to do it back and forth. And it successfully took a back and forth. Let's see, it took approximately two hours to, to, to complete due to incessant taunting from 59903. Post-seizure tested, testing showed that both subjects had returned to their original levels of competence. Okay, next test, former gang member of average intelligence. Test take, uh, oh, the administrator was the... And the taker left in a persistent vegetative state after exposure to whatever SCP that was. Vocabulary task. 6105 showed some initial reluctance, but eventually attempted to administer the test. 59921 remained in a vegetative state and did not respond to the questions. No seizure state occurred, and there was no subsequent change to vocabulary. Next up, a murderer with average memory capacity and an autistic savant with eidetic memory. The test was numerical working memory task instructed to respond, I don't know, to each question. Results, D6259 acquired a domain-specific working memory span in excess of 500 unique numbers or m musical notes, but showed no improvement in memory for words, spatial locations, or visual scenes. 6263's memory performance was average for numbers and music, but remained extraordinarily high in all other domains. Note, so performance on the test doesn't matter as long as there's some kind of response, such as actual intelligence is swapped regardless. Next test, administrator, a assaulter with average general intelligence. Test taker, a rhesus macaque monkey trained to hold up a small placard saying I don't know when prompted. Task used, analogies test. Results, 61553 attempted to leave after the first five questions, protesting that the test was the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen, but was persuaded to complete the task. Post-seizure testing showed that 6153 553 was unable to understand several forms of basic logic, including syllogisms, implication, and modus ponens. The monkey displayed human-level analogical reasoning ability. Okay, next test. 
a murderer with slightly below average general intelligence, and the test taker was a bottlenose dolphin trained to make a shrugging motion with its pectoral flippers when prompted. Um, task used general knowledge tests. The results data expunged. Notes, further experience with dolphin subjects are strongly discouraged. What happened? It was a general knowledge test, and it went from a a murderer with below average general intelligence to a dolphin, which would mean the murderer gained the general knowledge of the dolphin, and the dolphin gained the slightly below average intelligence of a murderer. So does that mean that the dolphin became a murderer, or that they learned more about dolphins than they ever want to know? Okay. Next, or last test, D59841A, multiple sex offender with genius level intelligence, test taker 61224A, meth, meth, bleh, methamphetamine dealer who suffered severe brain damage after accidental exposure to chemical fumes, test used full battery. Results, despite extensive damage to cortical regions associated with speech and motor control, 61224 was able to stay responsive throughout the test with the aid of class C stimulants. The first effects became apparent upon completion of two when 59841 began to pronounce words in the testing materials phonetically rather than according to their proper pronunciation. Further advancement through 4 and 5 prevented them from tallying scores in each task. At this point, they began to show signs of extreme distress and had to be forcibly restrained. Upon completing tasks 6 through 7, they lost the ability to read the testing materials and complained that the subsequent pages were full of squiggle things rather than letters. When instructed to continue, they again violently attempted to cease testing and was placed under sedation and instructed to conduct the rest of the test by simply holding the instruction page up so that 61224 could see it. Finally, completion of 9 and 10 resulted in total visual agnosia, rendering them completely unable to recognize objects in its surroundings or navigate through physical spaces without colliding into obstructions. 61224 showed no increase in aptitude and subsequent functional imaging showed no increase in brain activation in regions associated with visual, linguistic, mathematical, or mnemonic processing. Notes. Organic brain damage appears to prevent intelligence transfer, at least in one direction. Couldn't reverse this as neither subject was able to administer after the act as administrator after the test was completed. So, from the sounds of that, since one person had brain damage and the other person didn't, the person who was fine received the brain damage, but the person who had the brain damage was not able to receive the intelligence. So all that test did was leave them with two people with severe brain damage, and nothing they could do about it. Interesting. Let me swing back to the lexicon since I forgot to check the list. Let's see. Please use the following format in this log. Index 36A, an English translation of The Art of War. It was accurate and appeared to be formatted for casual reading. Zoologist guides into the care and feeding of sea scorpions. Illustrated text explaining how to properly raise an extinct arthropod in captivity, written from the standpoint of one experience with their care. Writing style implies the book to be a recent work despite them having been extinct for over 250 million years. Contents Latin translations of Elvis Presley songs. Side-by-side -side presentation of songs, song lyrics in English, Latin, and English pronunciation guide to Latin lyrics for ease of comprehension. Latin lyrics fit the original music with little deviation. Contents, foundation documents written by Dr. Blank on various SCPs. Notes, exact replicas of documents lost during incident blank, as well as additional notes by Dr. Blank not present in the original copies. Autobiography of Dr. Blank. The life of Dr. Blank recorded in great detail recorded up to incident blank, where it ceases abruptly. Includes a great deal of personal and private information about them, including his inner thoughts about various people and events encountered during his lifetime, as well as private moments. Beginner's Guide to Mimetic Kill Agents by Blank Blank. Researcher Assistant Green managed to re only read past the words Chapter 1 aloud before suffering a grand mal seizure and dying of multiple brain aneurysms. All subsequent readings of 1326 to be carried out by D-Class personnel only. Okay, contents. Pressed Flower of the Rose K family. Organized alphabetically by species name, then genus name. Every known genus was represented in addition to several previously unknown variants. All specimens were bonded to the page by unidentified means and could not be removed or defaced. First recorded instance of it producing objects as a part of its content. The secret lives of centipede nymphs offer unknown, author unknown. Document of the culture and religion of a species of sentient semi-humanoid arthropods in their native habitat. Access by accident after inputting the incorrect index for Dr. Blank's notes, then inputting the correct index without opening 1326. 
Inputting multiple index combinations into 1320 since found to yield different results than inputting either single combination. Index number 1A, 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 1A. Contents Are we there yet? Author unknown. Two sentences Are we there yet? No. Repeated exactly 40,000 40, times. Index 12G, 12C, 7F, 14 fun knitting projects by Blankety Blank. An illustrated guide to 14 knitting projects written in a child friendly format. Notably, illustrations and text indicate that people attempting said knitting projects will have eight fingers on each hand. Contents The Gentlewoman's Guide to the Perpetration and Proper Serving of Castaway Squirts by Lady Blank of Derbyshire. No such individual has been historically recorded. Notes dis It's a description on how to capture, identify from human castaways, and prepare for human consumption creatures resembling 1014. Also contains tips for ideal table settings while serving. User's Guide to Hogma Nish 8 with Vapidity by that user's manual describing the installation and capabilities of a piece of software uh, niche 8 for a, de a device the hogma which allows the user to genetically modify a hollow undifferentiated plant material to produce cultivated plants with desired qualities vapidity may be a form of digital rights management textual clues indicate authorship by a non-human in the canadian nation of world peace triumphant in the year of 112 approximately 2020 2220 to 2250 by the Gregorian calendar. Contents. Uh, transcripts of 15 episodes of My Favorite Martian. Translated into Polish. Retranslation reveals the adaptation is highly faithful, save that all lines spoken by Ray Walsh's character, Uncle Martin, have been replaced with lines spoken by Robin Williams' character, Mork, from Mork and Mindy. The Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the earliest surviving literary works known to man. A British translation of the original Babylonian script written in modern English. Translation mostly accurate save for the removal of some descriptive lines deemed redundant by the editors. Engineering blueprints for an unknown device. Visual blueprints for an elaborate robotic device somewhat resembling SCP-753. Text exists but is not in any language which has so far been translated by the Foundation. I'm an application format for a patent from the United States Patent and Trademark Office by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Notes not filled out. Theological material of the Church of the Hanging God. Theological material for an unknown religious cult claiming that li as life is suffering, all faithful should simply commit suicide to go directly to the afterlife. Notable in a difference from most suicidal cults, the document claims that it is a sin to attempt to kill others than the faithful as a method of conversion. What? Contents, The Tale of Theodora the Teddy Bear. A children's picture book involving the adventures of an anthropomorphic teddy bear named Theodora. Or Theodora. Normal apart from the ending in which a group referred to as a secretive creepy people kidnap Theodora. Okay, so that's probably about that one SCP that's a teddy bear that does things. Contents. The disinfection and sterilization of prion contaminated medical instruments. Author unknown. 3PP pamphlet apparently adapted for public dissemination from original scientific research. GDC logo at the top of the first page. No other publication data given. Contents. Life Burst by Jack Williamson. Science fiction novel published... Printed by Del Rey in 1985, matches published version apart from the absence of page numbers. Found as the Ballad of the Untranslated Cide, author unknown, apart from the title, handwritten, and data expunged on the inner cover, contents consist entirely of unidentified symbols vaguely resembling those carved into SCP-093, and illustrations apparently produced via oil paint show a vaguely humanoid creature wearing robes which prevent observation of details. Based on background details in said pictures, it is assumed that said humanoid is at least four meters in height. And which one was that one? Okay, red disc. Uh, poetry about fish, Fish Right Corporation. The sort of poetry regarding fish, said poetry, is generally of poor quality. The Ballad of John Claxtorfen. Contents were completely incomprehensible save for the title. 1,200 ways to die involving fire, but not involving a lighter. A list of exactly 1,200 death scenarios involving fire. The word lighter or anything pertaining to a lighter was never mentioned in the, the list. Contents. Book of Long Shadows. A collection of rhyming poems expressing human misery. Several sections are prefaced with a warning not to read the poems aloud. Definibus bonorum et malorum cicero. The famous section, Lorem Ipsum Quia Doris, and blah 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 blah, begins at page 7, with the dough of the initial Dolorum cut to page 6. 
The last page is a single phrase centered. Factum est. Contents. Novo Mundus Transcontinental Railroad. Ticket types. Novo Mundus Regent Board of Transportation. Notes 14 different types of railroad tickets written in an altered format of Latin. Contents. 20 flightless birds of the Ravel Woods. A guide referencing uh, referring to 20 species of flightless birds. Far from the common turkey, none are presently known to science, although if captured, blank and blank will be considered to require SCP classification. Contents. Lord Blackwood meets the Dread Mother. Describes the encounter of British explorer and naturalist Lord Blackwood and SCP-597 or a similar creature. Surprisingly tasteful. Who's Lord Blackwood? SCP-1867. Ah. Contents. Pest control for the imaginative mind. Do we... Uh, DIY Adventures, a 32-page pocket guide detailing various non-traditional ways of controlling insect infestations. Of the 1,024 methods listed, only 533 were proven to be safe for indoor use. A heavily modified version of the Torah written in the original Biblical Hebrew. The Book of Leviticus is missing, Deuteronomy has been cut down and merged with numbers, Genesis has been heavily altered. The story of the world's origins includes the creation of wild men alongside Adam and Eve, a far larger emphasis on Lamech and his family, and the extermination of the wild men by the hands of the entity Mithar. The story of Noah and his ark is almost three times as long. The Nephilim are described in far greater detail and play an active role throughout the book. A copy of the book was sent to the Foundation's Theological Research Department for further analysis. 1001 Years Ackerman features 1001 short stories, all of which span exactly one year. Most stories follow the themes of captivity, torture, and needless physical experimentation. About 800 of the stories include or hint at an all-powerful male figure named Ackerman. London's Many Secrets by Andrew D. Paul. The Tourist Guide to the City of London, published in 1899. Two of the book's chapters deal with secret underground complexes beneath the city. No such complexes were ever found, even when following the book's exact directions to them. A single untitled limerick about cats and penguins. Reading the limerick induces gustory synesthesia regarding the limerick. All readers have agreed that the limerick the limerick tastes like bacon flavored ice cream. Okay. Young Alchemist's Guide to Chemicals by Nicholas uh, Nicola Flamel. Illustrated in the 17th century style and written in archaic French and a format apparently intended for 10 to 15 year old children. It describes the alchemical symbols and the chemicals associated with them, along with the Philosopher's Stone and a universal solvent. Notably, mercury is not mentioned and in its place is t taken by silicone. Pool Loop, author unknown. A single page with the palindrome phrase, in words, alas, drown I, written in blue ink. When read aloud, the lungs of the reader begin to fill with water until the reader drowns. Blank personnel have died, resulting in Dr. Blank requesting 1320 cents to reconsider the containment procedures. With a response pending. Contents. How to, how to do the coolest stunt and impress all your friends by John Fresh McCoolis. Several pages filled with complex instructions for a single epic trick. All attempts at following instructions have failed due to maneuvers that are thought to require the ability to manipulate time. Regardless of that fact, the end result is expected to be a front side 360. Contents. After most long journeys of Bridge Journal, author's name is written in an unknown script. The story, about two individuals traveling through a seemingly anomalous force, appears to be a parody of a larger work. Contents. 2,000 Things You Should Never Write by jo Johanna Gregorio. Many pages filled with sentences and words from different known and unknown languages, enumerated in line from 1 to 2,000. Reading such lines will cause no effect more than a di faint dizziness in the subject, although writing them will provoke reactions that go from sudden decapitation to forgetting how to write at all. At the time of the experiment, no word has affected any person other than the writer. However, due to the dangerous nature of these words, Dr. Blank joined Dr. Blank's request to reconsider the containment procedures. Response is still pending. Index. Uh, Esperanto translation of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. Translation has numerous errors. Latrina, author unknown. A book doc documenting prophets Jesus Christ meeting Muhammad and discussing theology while scaling a mountain. While no reason for their climb is established, it is implied that they met by coincidence despite historically living at different times. The mountain is, civili is civilized by people living in temples that function as cities that get stranger the higher up they are until they are seemingly random structures inhabited by primates. At the peak, both men find a small wooden shack containing a single chair looking out the window. Contents Natural Shapes Author Unknown A guide to manipulating anomalous constructs into normal three-dimensional shapes. Every section starts with the name of the baseline shape, followed by the instructions without paragraphs. 
Contents. Repair and maintenance of an HP Dust Jet Inc. 48 Whiskey Printer. The HP Corporation. An in-depth guide explaining repairs of a non-existent printer model. The guide goes into nearly every conceivable malfunction and describes many procedures that will require tools unavailable to the average consumer. Notably describes these repairs as surgery. Contents. Fortnite Battle Royale Guidebook by Noob to Pro Gamer Guides. A synonym, uh, or excuse me, a pseudonym for an unknown author. Notes. The book contains several misspellings of points of interest names from the, the game Fortnite Battle Royale. I never thought I would see that come up in the in this website. So now I can say that I've had to talk about Fortnite in the SCP video. Not that anybody that I talk to in my day-to-day -day life is going to care. But anyway, the same thing we do every night or The Art of Villainy by Dr. Blank Blank. A book that's a combination of philosophy and comedy written from the point of view of a self-proclaimed mad scientist. Topics range from anarchistic political beliefs, comparisons between advertising and the act of brainwashing, to how to defend a Victorian-era castle from intruders using traps. Whether the author is playing a character or not is left unclear, purportedly published in 2023. It's probably a pinky in the brain joke. And this was last edited on June the 2nd, 2021, which is probably why there's a Fortnite reference in it. Okay, back to the topic at hand, the 51st state of mind. 1328 is Euclid. The area affected by SCP-1328 is to be monitored closely for any subjects affected by it. Located subjects are to be detained, issued amnestics, and returned to their point of origin. Their time displaced shall be covered up on a case-by-case -case basis. Diagram of 1328's location within the U.S. state of Tennessee. Witnesses to SCP-1328 manifestation events are also to be issued amnestics. If the anomalous properties are reported to local governing bodies, embedded foundation agents are to suppress the reports and issue amnestics to all witnesses. The fact that documentation is to be stored within Site-77's anomalous archive. Stated for revision, see addenda. Oh, it took me to- What? Ex- Um. Sorry if the microphone is picking up my fan while I'm confused. Because I'm at SCP-1328 and it just redirected me to an entry for SCP-001. Um. Well, I have a side series that's just me reading SCP-001, so I'm going to get to that regardless. So I guess I'll just wait to see when it happens. As a matter of fact, let's open the window and see how far I had to go. SCP-001. Ooh, weird squiggles. Chronologically, let's see. I am in the middle of Ouroboros, or Ouroboros. And this one is Kalinin's proposal. Kalinin's proposal. So right here. I am about one, two episodes away from that one. So... Huh. Because I have two more things in Ouroboros, uh, which is going to be its own episode. And then the next episode would have been one, two, three, four, or five. So, two more episodes of SCP-001 and we're going to get there regardless. So let's see uh, what it was while it was still SCP-1328. SCP-1328 is a phenomenon affecting the eastern portion of the state of Tennessee in the United States. Between August 1784 and December of 1785, when it was a territory known as Franklin. The territory was dissolved following this time, and did not display anomalous properties until at least 1866. Occasionally, maps, books, and other cartographic references will begin listing 1328 as being part of another country, adding an extra state to their maps. These maps will not show SCP-1328 as being geographically attached to these nations, showing its physical location within the United States documents affected by 1328. Wait. 
Did it just... Uh, within the U.S. Documents affected by SP-1328 will usually go into details about how it was an important part of the nation's cultural history. Persons reading these documents will be convinced of its status in history, often attempting to show as many other subjects as possible and spreading 1328's effect. Affected subjects may begin identifying themselves as residents of 1328 and attempt to navigate to it overland. No matter how far the subject originally was from 1328, they will arrive in one of its cities two to three hours after departure. Observation of affected subjects shows that they and whatever vehicle they are operating appear to fall into a chasm which suddenly emerges below them, followed by an emergence in 1328. Let's see. Did I miss a sentence? I did, okay. Subjects from different nations may encounter each other, which can cause confusion and anger due to 1328's effect. Subjects will describe 1328 as a disputed territory and insist that their nation has a stronger claim to it. This effect has led to local conflicts, as subjects affected by 1328 attempt to terminate persons with perceptions that conflict with their own. This has escalated into small-scale guerrilla conflicts prior to containment. It was discovered in 1866 by a foundation precursor known as the American Secure Containment Initiative. Originally believed to be a transportation anomaly, these subjects were returned to their homes. After the subjects returned, interviews were conducted and the anomalous effects established. As of August 17th, 1887, 1320 has been contained. Following its inheritance from the AC, or ASCI, it was classified as an SCP object and given the Euclid classification. Original documentation, 1866-098. Classification type, geographic, non-threatening. Protocols for containment. All men or women found to be situated within the area are to be expediently returned to their place of dwelling, with foreigners turned over to local magistrates as illegal aliens. Reports of the phenomena are to be collected with our arch archive for additional study. Description. Phenomenon 1866-098 is a phenomenon affecting 12 of the countries within East Tennessee. Counties within East Tennessee. On occasion, persons from other parts of the country and world as a whole will be deposited into it and claim it to be a part of their country of origin. Once cleared of their confusion, they will usually persist in attempts to return home the way they entered, which is not possible. When first discovered, over 20 Hessians, a Briton, and a Cherokee Indian were found living in it. Further observation of this effect is ongoing. Addendum Profile of Subjects Affected by It 65-year-old Caucasian male from Canada believed that it had been won by Canada during the War of 1812 and that the Americans living within were illegal immigrants from North Dakota. Repeatedly attempted to report neighbors to the local police and started numerous instances of harassment. Given Class C amnestic and returned home, 22-year-old Hispanic male from El Salvador was perceived that it was a region within his home country where more upper-class citizens resided and claimed to be attempting to visit relatives in the region. Further investigation revealed that several other El Salvadorian citizens had been residing within 1328. All of them were detained, given class amnestics, and sent home. 19-year-old African male from Somalia behaved like a raider, was trying to receive supplies for his militia, claimed it was part of his home country held by an opposing group, and that he was attempting to destabilize their power in the region. Currently being held by the Foundation and waiting decision for where to return him. 40-year-old Caucasian male from Prussia Believed to be an instance of the ASCI, he was given to local law enforcement. No further records have been found to corroborate his status past this. German records indicate that his study was found to be filled with a cartogra cartography equipment, maps, and travel supplies, and he was reported as a defector. Addendum, excerpt from a speech given by Michael Sen, a leader in the militia organization, Regular Alliance Troop. We do not take these incursions into our territory by the wretched alliance of the United States, Canada, North Korea, Mexico, Sealand, and Bavaria lightly. They are violations of our sovereignty and a national embarrassment. Franklin is a storied part of our cultural history, down to the beginning of our forefathers. They journeyed far to create it and built the great underground superhighway with only sweat and broken bodies. When those men who tra super travel under the Atlantic to upstage our right to this territory tell us it belongs to them, it is a slap in the face. Further escalation of the situation from any other nation will result in negative act, lead to negative action, possibly even a resolution within the United Nations to settle the matter. Senate and his staff were given Class B amnestics, and all copies of the broadcast were suppressed. An additional 456 civilians in the city of Redacted were issued Class C amnestics after reporting the broadcast on social networking sites. 
Additionally, several homes located in 1328 were marked as belonging to the Red Actors Troop were demolished. One instance of SB-39 was discovered at this location. Addendum. On November 2nd, 2016, all subjects affected by 1328 began manifesting a delusion that they were citizens of the Russian Federation. Amnestic tre treatments have been unable to alter this belief. In addition, most affected subjects appear to be displaying signs of cognitive dissonance with erratic and unpredictable behaviors resulting. Really wondering why they decided to pivot that to being an SCP-001 entry, or if it was in the first place. If I have them organized chronology, it might have started as an SCP-001 and they got ping-ponged. The Aquarium. SCP-1329, Object Class Anomalous Location? Containment Class Active, Hazard Rating Green. Standard containment policies, armed perimeter patrol and security camera network. Armed escort provided to observing researchers in the event of dangerous phenomenon. Specialized contact protocol, see document CO. Schedule A observation schedule. Okay. Special containment procedures. All SCP-1329-1 activity within the grounds of Site-97 or within 1329 is not to be interrupted outside of research protocol. Interaction with one specimen is to follow the procedure outlined in document CO. Description. SCP-1329 is an abandoned aquarium located somewhere in Russia classified as Site-97. No anomalies in materials or floor layout are present on the upper two floors. The three subsurface floors vary in size, architecture, and layout significantly when comprised to be compared to any other floors and are present on no blueprints from the time of construction. The building is in a state of severe disrepair, though it shows few signs of looting or vandalism. Efforts to rewire the building's electrical systems are underway. One is the collective designation of for a group of human beings which will regularly manifest in or around 1329. Such as are primarily from ethnic groups which within Central Asia and average 25 to 50 years in age, though individuals as young as 5 and as old as 70 have been observed. All age ranges provided are estimates. Such as speak a pigeon of Turkish languages, primarily Uzbek, Kazakh, and uh, Uyghur, with loan words from English, Russian, Dari, and Mandarin Chinese. Most subjects show signs of overexposure, malnourishment, and symptoms resembling mercury poisoning, specifically desquamation, heavy skin shedding, impulsive itching, and nerve damage. Subjects generally wear heavily repaired or modified clothing, commonly consisting of or incorporating parts of a pale green jumpsuit or scrubs. Armored vests are an uncommon but regular feature, and in one instance, an atmospheric diving suit was observed. Items carried by one have included firearms, improvised spears or harpoons, compasses and map-making equipment, lengths of rope, cans of motor oil, plastic jugs containing distilled water, fish stock, whale blubber, or algae cultures, and various trinkets containing fish bones or preserved skin. During manifestations, one will walk around, converse with each other if more than one is present, and interact with their environment. So they are aware of observers and will act accordingly. However, they do not seem to be completely aware of the nature of their location or that of their observers. As best as can be determined, one subject perceives entirely different surroundings and likewise perceive observers as other instances of one. The lack of shared context in reference to people, places, or events mentioned by one has made meaningful conversation difficult. Reference collection is underway. Subjects in repeated manifestations will remain unaware of the presence of observing individuals or outside events until physical contact is made. These subjects will show no signs of remembering contact made in prior manifestations and will not be persuaded to act contrary to the events in their particular event. The manifestation of one subject consists of entry and exit into a room or area, with location dependent on the observer's line of sight. Manifestations average anywhere from 10 seconds to upwards of an hour, but will not end until the subject has passed from the view of observers. When under observation and containment, video recording will experience a 3 second blackout exactly 23 minutes and 10 seconds after the subject's entry into the room, during which period the subject will disappear. As of blank blank 2013, 358 unique one individuals have been cataloged. Phenomena within SCP-1329 fall into three categories, stable, regular, and irregular. Stable phenomena are present at all times, regular phenomena will repeat at exact intervals or after specific events, and irregular phenomena will repeat at either irregular intervals or will not repeat. The majority of one manifestations are irregular phenomena. Stable phenomena include 
a specimen tank filled with several hundred kilograms of raw meat, showing no signs of decomposition. Analysis reveals meat to be from several colacan specimens. A specimen tank containing four large jellyfish containing human brains with the, within the proximal bulb. No water is present in the tank. A large fungal growth containing a school of 209 Atlantic herring. All specimens are alive. A specimen of tasseled wabagong inhabiting the main office. Specimen will attack any intruding organism at floor level. Specimen suffers no ill effects from lack of water. A separate tentacle belonging to an unknown species of cephalopod measuring 19 meters in length. The tentacle consists of fibrous tissue. Closer inspection reveals these fibers to be smaller tentacles. The presence of handwritten documents in the language of one. Documents are heavily damaged by water, but appear to contain shipping manifests, instruction manuals for a variety of subjects, personal accounts, and maps. Analysis is of the contents is underway. Regular phenomena include opening the door to room B-106 will reveal a one subject in the specimen tank, being attacked by a juvenile bull shark. The subject will struggle for approximately 30 seconds, beating at the shark's head and attempting to gouge out its eyes before dying. No attempts to rescue the subject have been successful. The phenomena will not reset until the room has been exited and the door has been shut. Two armed one specimens will transport a plastic crate through basement level 2 every Thursday at 10-12 a.m., starting at the stairwell and ending in room B-215. Muffled sounds can be heard emanating from the crate. Basement level 3 will fill with salt water during the months of February and July. No anomalous tropical fish native to the non-anomalous tropical fish native to the South Pacific will be present during these periods. Water and fish will leave no trace of their presence after the period ends. Irregular phenomenon. Conversations in the second floor men's restroom. The language matches that spoken by one, but the majority of the words are indistinct. The manifestation of 138, who will physically assault indiv any individuals present before running off. The manifestation occurs throughout the entirety of 1329. The manifestation of 103 and 104 being a woman of approximately 30 age and a female child of approximately 7. 103 appears to be in the third trimester of pregnancy and to be completely unaware of outside stimuli. 104 will lead 103 by the hand through the facility with some urgency. Of note are several tears in one's abdomen, or 103's abdomen, revealing compacted plastic refuse. Manifestation is generally observed on the ground floor, but may appear in basement level 1. Streams of bubbles appearing in midair. Event occurs throughout 1329. The appearance of the deceased body of a tiger shark specimen in the main second floor hallway. The body shows signs of massive blunt trauma through the impact of, with a motor vehicle. Addendum 1. At some point in 2011. A specimen of 1 manifested in downtown Bratak, Germany, approximately blank thousands of kilometers from 12 SCP 1329. Subject was arrested by local authorities for threatening pedestrians with a harpoon. Manifestation ended before Foundation agents were able to secure the subject. Addendum 2. The following is a a translation of one of the documents recovered within 1329. We are running out of water. Zizun braved the leech fields three days ago to find more, and has not returned. I fear he is lost. Stastolkov believes that he will be able to fix the pumps and that we will be able to remain here. While I hope that he can, do not like this place. These are haunted seas. Stastolkov says that is nonsense, but we have lost ten of our group since we are, our arrival here, including four of our trash farmers. Sasolkov claims that the cost is worth it, that what he is looking for is here somewhere. I will speak with him tomorrow about this. Well, that's... what did that say? Shark Punching Center? SPC. List of pages with Shark Punching Center. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Well, okay, so that about does it for this episode of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the next episode, we're going to check out the Universal Dumping Grounds, the Mouth Soap, Involuntary Shape Shifting, the Phantom App, and Numerology Ghosts Apartment. If you like this video, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things. If you want to click the bell, you can do that as well, and I will see y'all in the next one. Later.